The journey of a basketball player is a very complex concept. From that first moment that you step on the court and you first put the ball in the hoop, it becomes a lifelong passion. It becomes a part of your soul. It becomes immortalized within you. You become one with basketball. Some people try to say it's just a game, but it's so much more than that. It's a lifestyle. It's a burning passion. It's a career. It's the reason that you wake up at the crack of dawn to work on your craft. It's the reason that you keep pushing, keep grinding, adding reps to your workouts. If going professional was an easy journey, every athlete would achieve it. It would be ubiquitous, but it's not because it's not perfect. It's not utopian, but rather it's imperfect. It's grueling, it's rigorous. The triumphs must be digested with the defeats and the successes must be stomached with the letdowns. Yes, it's volatile. Yes, it's unpredictable. But if it wasn't, we wouldn't be doing it. That uncertainty fuels us, makes us who we are. Manifestors, champions, transcendent individuals. So it's not just a game, it's a journey. And for Antoine Doodle, former professional basketball player, those dreams that reside within the starry eyes of every basketball hungry kid came to fruition and materialized. But navigating treacherous terrain is in the job description. And the inevitability of adversity and obstacles is a constant in this sector of work, abounded with beautiful uncertainty. This is Antoine Boudel, former collegiate and professional basketball player. He is now the Director of Athletic Operations here at only the Elliott Gym in Shirts, Texas. Uh, earliest memory I could recall was uh, my grandmother. She got me a Toronto Raptors uh, themed basketball. It was black and purple. And they had the, the big Raptor on it, the dinosaur, the red dinosaur with the jersey on it. Um, that's my earliest memory of basketball. It was actually the first basketball I got, and which was pretty much the start of me um, falling in love with the game. Uh, do you remember the, the first time that you played for a competitive team? Or, for, or as an organized sport? Yeah. As an organized sport? Uh, yeah, actually, I was in I was in a primary school, or which I would call elementary school, uh, playing at Hugh Campbell uh, Elementary in uh, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, and I was always a big guy on the team, so automatically they put me at that center position. So, learned that basketball was your sport, that it was meant for you. Like a lot of kids, I played I played multiple sports growing up, uh, soccer, baseball, uh, did track and field, uh, did men's volleyball as well. The only sport we didn't have that wasn't really big back home was uh, American football. Uh, we played everything else and uh, you know what, I think with my size, I don't know, this had to be after I moved to Houston. I was playing at a high school called St. Thomas, uh, St. Thomas High School in Houston and uh, right when I got my first in game dunk. district game or what but we had a big crowd in the gym and uh yeah caught an alley you everybody went crazy uh me and my teammates went crazy on the court as well um what was the recruiting process like coming out of high school were there a lot of schools interested or how how did you navigate that sort yeah, of terrain i had about if i can remember correctly i had about 24 offers um from low to high uh some of them significant some of them you know some of them less insignificant. Uh, the recruiting process was pretty crazy. Uh, thankfully, I had my mother and my head coach at the time uh, to help me kind of navigate those waters. Um, I think at the end, back then, the the deal was you can go and visit, officially visit up to four schools. Um, I think, I can't remember. I officially visited three, I believe, and ended up choosing San Houston State uh, in the end, but I think three that I went to, I went to Florida Atlantic and I ended up going with Sam Houston in the end. And what advice would you give to sort of the next generation of young basketball players, you know, going through that same process that you went through? Like, what insight can you give to them? Uh, man, the game has changed a lot. I, even, you know, even as far as recruiting, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not super keen on how it's going these days, but based on what my experience was back then, uh, the best thing I would say is have fun, be open, and do your best to have a good team by your side so that you can uh, 
because it's a lot of influence, especially nowadays. You know, you got money and more money involved and everything as well. But have fun with it. Uh, enjoy the visits. Enjoy the campuses. Um, but make a make a decision based on what you believe is best for you as a player. Uh, and do your best to ignore the fluff and have good people in your corner to give you good sound advice. While I was playing basketball, no. Uh, I can't think of a time where I, where I felt like I didn't want to play basketball. I do know my first, my first season overseas, I was playing in South America. Uh, it was my first time just being that far away from my family, uh, being in a completely different part of the world, uh, different time zone, uh, weather different, couldn't understand the language my first time out. And, you know, that's a bit weird for you just because it's, it's, it's not familiar at all, right? You kind of miss the familiar to a degree. Uh, but as soon as I was able to really lock in and understand what I was there for, uh, that kind of faded away over time. Uh, I'm a director here, a uh, director of sports performance. So I take care of the strength and conditioning side of things, the athletic performance side of things. Um, I've been in this position since April of 2023. I've uh, been a trainer uh, with kids even while I was there in my professional basketball days, starting in 2016, uh, but taking over this official capacity since April. And it's just something I love to do. Uh, my purpose that I've determined, I've determined my purpose is that I want to help people become the best versions of themselves. All right, that whatever they feel, whatever that means to them. So athletes can want to see them go as big and as, as high and as far as they, they can possibly go, uh, whether it be uh, whether it be professional, whether it be college, uh, whether it just be varsity on the high school team. Right, I want to see people become the best version of themselves. And what advice would you give to aspiring basketball players who find some sort of uncertainty in their future, like not having offers, not knowing where they're going to play next, but just you know wanting to keep going and keep pushing for that? The name of the game is consistency. Um, once you decide what you what it is that you want, I think there's a certain level of practicality that needs to that needs to be in place as far as how you're thinking, how you're processing it. But if it's something you want bad enough, just be willing to do whatever it takes to get it done and that looks different for different people uh maybe a harder road for some people maybe an easier road for some people based on genes athleticism uh, connections experience but if it's something you want bad enough do your best to find find out everything it's going to take and then do your adapters to make sure that you can get that get that done well for me basketball dominated 22 years of my entire life, uh, me being 34 at this point, uh, I started playing, I guess, officially and seriously since I was 12. Um, been in love with the game since I was six. I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan, he was my hero. Uh, but I lived and breathed this game every single day of my life since I started. And it literally became my identity over time. So to hear somebody say that it's just a game, what I consider is my whole world, uh, I think it's, it's an understatement to say that I disagree. Uh, basketball came with a lot of lessons. It came with a lot of experiences. It showed me the world. Uh, it cultured me, helped me to learn different languages. Um, you know, uh, it can never just be a game.